Hi there, Darren Lutchner here from 365 Assist. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a table of records. In this case, I'm going to use Dataverse, but you could use SharePoint or Excel, it doesn't matter. And how to build what would be considered a cross tab of data, or it may be like a, a pivot table, a little bit like a pivot table in Excel. So I've got a row, rows of data, in this case with a whole lot of fruit that has different dates in them. Uh, not date the fruit, date, date the date, and a number in there, like 500 for each fruit or 400, whatever, and be able to add all those numbers up for that particular period, not just for that date, but turn the date into a month, and then have the user be able to select the months and look forward in that month. A little bit hard to explain, so let me just now quickly show you what I'm trying to achieve here and how I achieved it. So the source data looks starts looks like this. So I've got a table, a dataverse table, that is just a table called fruits and all these different fruits, oranges, elderberries, bananas, or apples, etc. in here, right? So that's the column of name. Next to it, there's a date, could be a date of ordering, whatever, right? Just different dates here. And then just a number. And again, that could be stock ordered or some number of ordered or something like that, right? So I've just got a whole lot of records, by the way, these records on a side note, these records were all created with using ChatGPT to create a sample of data in Excel. And I just created, uh, asked it to create some sample data uh, specifically, and this built uh, a hot 100 records or so doing that. And so what I'm gonna wanna do is um, group these up into months and year, and don't care about the date. So let's look at the app and show you what actually this is gonna end up looking like. So the app looks like this. It's got a gallery of all the different fruits so fruits by the month, so using that date column, just for the dates in that column, um, it's each month, three months, and it adds up all the fruit for that month. So for instance, Apple, all the ones in February 2024 are 268. So I've just quickly gone back to the data and I filtered these fruits. So you can see all the apples and all, I just filtered on the date for everything in February 2024. And if you add all those in using this calculator, it adds up to 268. So uh, yeah, just showing you what that data looks like. So if I go back here, there's that 268. And so that's that's adding all that. That's making the table sort of look like, I guess, a cross tab in Excel. I think that would be a pivot table or a cross tab table, something along, along those lines. So that's the first part of building this thing. And then the second part is to be able to change this month. So by using this drop down here, which is a collection in itself, um, and this this drop down changes every month. So if I go move this from February to March, have a look here now. So the table, the gallery, has now changed from no longer shows February. It now shows the March, April, and the May ones. And if I move this across to April, then I get April, May, and obviously there's nothing in June, but I would get stuff if there was in June too. So you can actually change the months of that data. And as I said, that base data is connected straight to that uh, Dataverse table. Right, so let's go into how this app is built. So let's start off with the best place is the on start. So we're in the app, uh, on the app icon here, and the on start, and there's a few collections we need to start to build to collect the data that can be used in that form. So the first part of the collection is we need to create a collection uh, to, uh, of the next 10 months for the combo box. So this little, if I go over back to the app, whoop, if I go back to the app, this little uh, combo box here to create these um, next 10 months to be able to put that in. So what we want to do is we want to make the 10 months that are rolling. We don't want to have to hard code every month or every few months, come in and add new months. We want the app to be able to f go, what are the, this month and the next nine months, if you like. So 10 months worth of data, you obviously can change that. So let's go through how we do that. So the first one is we would do just a clear collect and I've called this collection uh, whole next 10 months. That's the name of the collection. And the only thing I've done with the first one is just put the current month that we're in in there. So it's the first record in there, the month, which will be this month. And then uh, that's the name of the column. And the text is going to, you know, text today. And uh, that's, that's the current month. I'm also putting a column called number one uh, or number, if you like. Uh, number's important because that's going to help us understand when we roll to the next 
when we roll to the next step, we need to add plus one each time to these. So we need a rolling number from one to 10, in this case, that rolls up so we can count that. And I'll show you how we do that later. So two columns, one's called month and one's called number. And the first record is just the current month. And remember also a trick is that, see this format of this month, it's three, uh, four M's and four Y's. That format uh, will have to be consistent throughout. So whatever format you make this, whether it's the four month like uh, name like I did or a three M and four Y's, you just need to be consistent throughout and make sure otherwise these won't match up. So that's the first record. Then the next record is a rolling. It starts with, uh, it's the same collection. So collect this time because we're adding records. We're not clearing the collect. And the collection's called cold next 10 months, the same as what's up here. And then we're going to run a sequence of nine. So we've got nine records. Again, you can adjust that. You can make that four or 12 or whatever you want to do, right? You don't have to have nine. I'm just doing the next 10 months because it's nine because the first month here is the first one. And then I'm adding nine, nine more months. And then to the month column, I'm going to uh, going to add a date and add the time unit, unit. So this is this value comes from the value of that sequence above it. And so it will just add another month for each time. It'll just go through the four all nine times and add the value of the next month for that month. And the number, again, I'm just adding the value and it's plus one because we've already used the number one here. So let's have a look. If I just run that on start, let's have a look at this um, whole next 10 months. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So if I just roll this up and go to collections, Cole next 10 months, we'll just end up looking something like that, right? So we've got 10 months starting from the current month, which is February, 2024, rolling for the next well, nine months, if you like, and there's a number there. So that's what the table ends up looking like. So now let's go back to the app on start. And here we have to create a couple more tables for the cross tab to be able to cross tab the uh, records the fruit into different months <clears throat> so how do we do this well the first thing is we create the first collection the clear collect i've called this one coal fruit list <clears throat> and the first bit in that is i need to show columns and add columns uh, to be able to change the column called date so remember in the table sorry in the table i have this column called date and i need to take that into particular months. So let's go and we take that and turn that using the text function, we can change that into the MMMYY. Remember again, to make sure that that formatting is the same all across the board, the whatever format you decide to use. And then we just add the columns into that collection. So we have new name, new number, and then the fruit month, which is the new column we've just created, then we wanna add that in there as well. So let's have a look at what coal fruit list would look like. So if I go to my table or my functions, go to my variables and go to coal fruit list and view that table, it looks like this, okay? So we now have, all we've really done is we've taken all the rows and we've got the new name, new number, and then we've changed the date instead of using the actual date that was there, like the 1st of February, 2nd of February, whatever it was, we've changed that to the full name February 2024. And if I go down, we'll probably see March and, and whatever other months I have in my sample data there as well. So based on that coal fruit list collection we've created, we need to create, again, another collection. This one I've called coal fruit by month. And we're using the source, we're going to group by, sort of cross tab or group by, the coal fruit list from that group. We're going to take that and we don't need the number bit. That's just for ordering later. Uh, but we do need the name and the date and that's creating, creating a, a, a collection there. And that collection is going to look like this. So it's a summary of, of so it's a summary of all the, um, all the different fruits and behind it uh, is that other collection. So if I go to orange and click new date, then you can see I've got all the oranges and all the numbers there uh, for that, for that particular, for the, just that fruit at this stage. Right, now we've got everything on the un, on start complete. Let's look at the actual screen itself and what's involved in that. So let's start off with the drop down here, with the drop down of the dates, the 10 dates here. It's pretty simple, that one. 
Um, let's start with the um, items there. So the items in that, so I'll come back. The items there are just the Coal Next 10 Month, the collection that I created called Coal Next 10 Months. And I've just created a default selected items to be able to get the current month uh, in, that, in that to start with. All right, the next bit is to do with the uh, gallery here, the table in the gallery and its headings. We're going to leave the headings alone for now. Uh, that's a, that's a, another piece of work we'll talk shortly. But let's talk about the gallery at this stage. So the gallery is just the items are coal fruit by month, right, the collection, and sorting with the new name, the name of the fruits is going to be what it's sorted by. Okay, so let's go to the variables, just so we've got a few different collections here. So I just want to make sure that we're in the right one. So this is coal fruit by month, which is this one that I have the five rows in. And it's just taking the names. It's just taking this, this one for there. And it's taking the names. If I go to the fruit name, then it's just new name. That's all it's taking for the fruit one, for the name of the fruit. So now let's start to talk about the columns. So what we're doing here, remember in the columns, this column here, the numbers, if I go to here in the app, so remember that this number, what we're looking for is we're looking for the sum of all the apples, or the fruit of name, in this case apples, for that month. So all the apples for February 2024, we want that one. All the apples for March, we want to sum that, etc. So how do we do that? Let's go into here. So the first thing we need to do is look at sum, is we're going to do a sum of new number. And we're going to use the coal fruit list here. So if I go to this collection, coal fruit list, you can see I've got all the fruit months. So if we're talking about um, apples, which is there before, we have a February 2024 apple, 86. If I go down a few more rows, I've got another February 2024 apple, 43. There's another one down here with 52. So we need to add all those up. So the way we do that is we've got to do a, a filter on a couple of things. The first thing is we get the fruit list. That's the collection we're getting. So we're filtering on where the name, the name of the fruits in that collection is equal to this item in this row. So we're looking at, in this case, this row will be apples. The next one will be bananas, etc. And we have to check that the fruit month is the same as a fruit month we've selected in the drop down above here, right? So we're going to be looking at where fruit month equals the month we've selected in that month. So in this case, we've selected February. So it's going to, I can't scroll this up too much. There we go. February. And we go, we're getting the February for this particular month. So that's the first column, right? That's how we're going to get the numbering of adding using those that collection. So this is this collection, just be aware, this collection fruit list is not the same collection as the galleries collection, right? The gallery is collecting on coal fruit by month, sorry, up here, but the actual number we want is from the fruit list. So just be careful that you're using the two galleries correctly here. Now that's the first row. The next rows are the same, but different. Okay, so let's go to the second row. Now it's a little bit different. It's still got the sum. It's still got the filtering, the same filtering. It's still choosing the name of the fruit from that record, but the fruit month needs to be a little different. We're lo now looking at the next month in the row. We're not looking at February in this case. We're looking at the next row. And this is where that number that I put in the collect 10 months. So if you go back to when we created in, the um, when we created this collect 10 months on the app on start, remember I put this number in here, one to 10. So this number is what's gonna help us drive what the next month is. So what we're looking here now is the fruit month, look up where the in the collection, the number, okay, the number is equal to the number in the combo box or the selected item in the combo box, but we're adding a plus one. So we're adding one to that number and we're returning the month. Okay, so now we're going to return, we're going to filter on basically where the fruit month in coal fruit list, right? We're going to take this coal fruit list, this month here, and we're returning, we're trying to get the month from the selected item, but add one. Okay, that's what this does. And then, you know, we're just adding all the numbers up same as we did before. And the second column, the next column along is just the same as this column. If I go to here... But instead of plus one, it's a plus two, okay? And you could do plus three, plus four, depending on how many columns you want to put into this. 
Right, now let's just cap this off with the the tote with the titles here. So the first one, I just put a name fruit in there, that's easy. The second month, the first month is easy as well. That's just gonna be the selected item here, right? That you've got there. The next month gets a little more tricky. It's similar to what we did with the numbers down here, but we're not doing any sums. We're just looking up the col next based on the number that we've selected in here in the, in the combo box and we've just added one. So whatever the month name is there, that's there. And then the next one is plus two, just like I did before. So that's how you would just do these titles and they would roll. So if we play this, as I said, we're gonna get March, that moves on to March. So it's 253. When I move to April, April move over there with 197. Just make sure your numbers are correct. 197 and it does a rolling, goes on and rolls along if you like. And we go back to February or back that way. There you go. So I hope this video helped you understand how you can now use your record, your data record, and move those by months or period of, of dates and be able to move them across by choosing a drop down. So thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe to my channel where I've got other great videos of how to use Power Apps and Power Platform stuff.